space can limit you in how things are done, okay? This space will not. This is an anti-silo move. People can come out of their silos and come together and join in a, in a communal space. It can kind of surge Pittsburgh forward and it just kind of adds to the vibrancy of the whole region and the school. And that quad is going to be quite extraordinary. Dean Damon has used the word interconnectedness as the kind of organizing theme for all the parts of the building, parts of the curriculum, and then in turn, that interconnectivity that happens within the building happens out to the campus and to other disciplines. Throughout the building, we have many more kinds of interaction space than you would typically in the building. So there's no corridor that's just a corridor. There's spaces you move through that are also lounges, studies, gathering spaces. And that same thing happens as the building meets the outside. So there's a kind of academic grove outside the building that can be used for events and seminars and parties and festivals and terraces that can be used for informal gathering. Things change and you have to be nimble. So what kind of classes should you have? How big should those walls be? What sort of stuff should you have here today may not be what you should have tomorrow. So hopefully the flexibility of what can come is built into this physical space. I think it's a new paradigm. I think it's combining business with some of the STEM disciplines to give our students the kind of skill sets they will need in this rapidly changing, complex world of business that they'll face in the 21st century. Think of the building as not only a flexible space, but a system in which all the data, electricity are modular and integrated in a way that itself can be modified over time, can be very low energy use, the technology can be basically plug and play. In a way, we're thinking of the building as infrastructure. People are moving uh, in record numbers in the cities. Why are they moving to cities? Because people want to be connected. There's a whole set of consequences of connectivity. If the new building and its quad are extremely rich and diverse, that allows it to make better connections out to the north, to the south, to incubation spaces, to engineering, to you know, computer, to the arts. In some sense, it goes global because there's gonna be a lot of distance learning happening and a lot of events that bring people together. The new building provides us an opportunity to provide a home for undergraduate education in the business school. This is where undergraduate business students and economic students can come to work on class projects, really live in the building and have their own home. It's just not gonna be a business school. Probably 40% of the space is for non-business school reasons and that was done on purpose. Undergraduates, graduates, families visiting, alumni, you know, will be drawn in to stop in the hub, have a cup of coffee, go to the Welcome Center, go to an event at the auditorium, use the fitness center, et cetera. It's really a dialogue between the people who use it and the building. At each level, there are kind of large uh, curving bridges that are almost like terraces of, of social activity. You're, you're seeing and being seen, but you have places to perch of different character, different scales, um, different degrees of intimacy. I think it's really important because this is a place that people are gonna live in practically, you know, not quite 24 seven, I hope, but almost. I'll be super excited when X number of years, and hopefully X is not a very large number, we have a very, very major company that gets created out of that space and from the people occupying that space. That's what will get me really excited. And then I know that it'll all have been worth it. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, so there is an incredibly vibrant building that's just not going to be built for today but they can change over time as, as business education changes and as the school changes.